Recently, you encountered kidnappers. Yes. You were kidnapped. Yes. Can you tell us the story? Okay. I, I own a farm in Lanlate town. That's um, Iparapa East local government of Oyo State. And um, so it was a Friday. I go there Mondays to Fridays. Myself and my fiancé. My fiancé also manages a processing factory not too far from my farm. And um, so, but I, I have a house on my farm, so he has a room in my farm. We stay there. So he goes to his own place, comes to my place to stay. And then on Friday, we come to Ibado together. And so we were coming back home that day. Um, the farm to Lanlate Town is about an hour drive, between 45 to one, an hour drive. And then um, we were coming back when, um, I think we were almost at the town, when all of a sudden, I just saw that it Almost at what, to what town? Lanlate Town. So your farm is how many hours drive about from Lalata? Hour. About an hour drive. From Lalata. So on, on about on getting to the town, what Almost happened? Almost to the town. We're not in the town yet. Okay. Almost to the town. I was, um, I was not feeling fine. I was sick, so I took some drug. So I reclined my chair so I could sleep. Although I was in the front with him, he was driving, and I saw that it, um, he swerved. So I raised up my um, my head and I saw. The Fulani guys. Did you say Fulani? Yes. They were Fulani. They were dressed as Fulani. So, and they had, they were armed. They had the cutlass. And then they wanted us to stop. So, they shrugged and tried to outrun them. So, I was hoping we could escape. So, we left those ones. And we didn't know there was another one in the front again. It was probably waiting for us, anticipating that we might make a run for it. And that was how he shot into the car. He shot into the car? He shot into the car. And um, that went straight and uh, hit my fiancé on the head, at the back of his head. And um, I even, I don't even know. So, so fast, I, I didn't even know what to do for a while because the blood was rushing out of his head. You know, I still, I still see that a lot of times. You see the picture a lot of times? Yeah. He, when the bullet struck him, yeah. what did you do? Yeah, I, I was trying to see if I could save him, if I could apply pressure to stop the blood from flowing. Did the blood stop flowing? I couldn't even do that because I noticed the car was about to, it lost control, so I noticed the car was about to hit a tree. So I decided to put it the in. The car was still in motion? It was still in motion, but it was it already swamped to the bush because it was a forest. Like the middle of the forest. So I got the car to stop. And before I could do anything for him, they already met up with us. So they opened the car and pulled me out. How many of them? Four of them. There were four of them. So they pulled me out. They were angry because we did not stop. And then they tried. Um, they were angry, so they, they, one of them even wants to match at me that, why didn't you stop? Did you want to hit them? You know, so I was... Were they speaking English? You know, Yoruba. Were they speaking Yoruba? Yeah, but, you know, it wasn't a smooth Yoruba because it's not their language, obviously. So, so they started shouting for me for, and all that. So... As they were shouting, what did you do? I... I was still in shock about the, the the shot, so I was just saying Jesus, Jesus. I was, and then by the time they pulled me out, you know, kicking me and all, I was just okay. I started begging them, and also. Did they see that your boyfriend was they, going they, through they, pain? They didn't even. 
they didn't pause. I know they saw it, they didn't, but they didn't, that did not stop them. They didn't pause to even look at him. No attempts to even help him? No, no, nothing. They were more interested in you? In, in me, you know, getting me, you know. They didn't even pause. Just pulled me out and I was just begging them. And so they got me and then took me into the bush and told me to start running. So after a while they tied, they asked me to bring my hand and tied a rope on my hand. So one, there was one in the front, one was using the rope to pull my hand. There was another one at the back that was hitting me anytime um, I slowed down. Because I guess they wanted to leave the scene as soon as possible. Time you guys were in the forest. We were in the forest. Running in the forest. Running in the forest, yeah. So we just kept on running and running and running. And anytime when you say running, I slowed down. Walking or running? We were running. They were, you know, they wanted to leave that place as soon as possible. I, I think that's the reason. So they didn't even allow me to slow down. I told them I wasn't feeling fine. You know, the drug I took, I had cata, I had malaria, the drug I took, I took Actifed. So my throat was really dry. You know, at the time I slumped down, they pulled me up again and they were beating me. So I just had to summon that um, that strength to run with them because I saw they were determined to get out of that place. So when, when we were, at the time when we were running, it was getting late because I think we left the farm around 4, so it would be around 5 o'clock when that happened. So when it was getting dark, I was asking them, I was asking for water because I was thirsty with the running and then with the drug I took. You know, at this time it, you know, it, has, it had rained. It had rained? Yes. So when it was raining? We were still running. Still running in the rain? Yeah, we were still running all through. Still running. So I was asking for water, they said there was no water. And then later we just caught to a puddle of water, you know, rain water that was just flowing and they asked me to drink. I didn't have a choice because I was thirsty. You drank? I had to drink it. I had to drink it. I was just I was just praying as I was drinking it that that it would not have any bad effect. Around what time did they stop the car? That would be around five o'clock. Five PM? Five PM, yes. So by the time you were in the forest, it was already getting dark. Yes. Yes. You spent the night in the forest. We all through. We were. We were. I think we ran. We ran almost all through the night. We ran almost all through the night. It was because for days I was still limping. We ran almost all through the night. No sleep. We got to a place and then we slept. But definitely I couldn't sleep. When you say you slept, how? I mean, that means that we were all sitting down to rest. So some of us were sleeping, some took turns. And your hands were still tied. Of course, time. all true. All true. Yeah, so by the time we were going to rest, they made me, um, they blindfolded me. So I, I wouldn't see them. So you never saw their faces? Mm -mm, no, I didn't really see their faces. I didn't really see their faces. They warned you not to look up. Yes. In fact, before we got to that place, there was a time because, we, you know, we got to a road. Excuse me. We got to a road and then we had to stop for a while to allow the traffic to go down. So, there were, I don't know, maybe they didn't have a clothes at that time. So, they made me lie down, you know, face down. So, I wouldn't look up. So, when the traffic went down, it was, there wasn't much movement. Then we continued. So when we got to that spot where we were going to sleep, we just sat down. Some were taking watch, blindfolded me to make sure I wasn't going to look at them. They didn't put on the touch lights. They were just running through the bush. But they had touch lights? They had, but they didn't put it on. So we were just walking through the bush. So when it was six o'clock, they took the phone. Okay, while we were coming, they already took my phone away from me and threw it away. Then, I, I didn't know that they had picked my fiancé's phone from the car also. So, they asked me to open it. I said I couldn't. 
and so when it was six o'clock they removed the seam and um I guess they are, I didn't even know that it, it, that was it just because I knew they destroyed it to remove the seam. So I thought probably they didn't want, um, you know, the phone will have a location, a GPS yeah. to track. So, but they destroyed it completely and threw it, made sure it was disposed on the way. But they removed the seam. So apparently they had inserted the seam in their own phone. So when it was six o'clock, they asked me to call my parents and tell them that they were demanding for 50 million naira for me to be released. So <clears throat> I called my dad and, um, you know, he also was begging them 50 million. How? He was trying to plead with them and they just told him if he wanted to see me alive, he had better find it. So they ended the call. Then we started the journey again. How did they sound when they were talking to your dad? Were they brutal? Yes, they were. Yeah, they, 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 very, very. Very, very, very. They were just... They spoke English to your dad or Yoruba? No, Yoruba. They were speaking Yoruba to me. But they had a language they were using to communicate within themselves. They had a language? They had a language they were communicating. And you don't know that language? No, I don't. I don't. So when you say they are Fulani, how did you arrive at that? Okay, so I farm in a place where we have a lot of Fulanis around. We have Fulanis uh, um, settlers also. They live there. So a lot of them have been living there for like 15 years. Mm. Yeah, so familiar with them. They have cattle. And the only thing we always have issue with is their cattle coming to the farm. And then sometimes we have to take them to the police station. In fact, they just had an agreement. We just made them write an agreement that if they, if they allow their cattle into our farm again, they were going to leave that place permanently. So I'm familiar with them. I mean, you see them around all the time. So, so that was like, you know, so they were dressed like them, they looked like them. During the process of running in the forest, did you cross a river? Yes. So that morning when we moved again, because they didn't want to stay in a single location, so we, we started the journey again, and then we were running, and then, you know, it had rained. So the rain started and ended while we were there, no shelter, nothing. So when we got to a particular point, I mean, the river was, I mean, it was really, really, the current was heavy. And so one of them went through it first. And then, of course, I was shorter than them. So he went there and then they told me to also come around. I was really scared. How did you walk through that river? Uh, your hands up? How? My, 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 my hands were still tied. My hands hand, were tied as my you side, walked Yeah, river? my hands were still tied. So one of them just held on to that rope in the front and was pulling me because I was really scared because it came up to here when we were passing. So we had to go through it and then, yeah, so they were pulling me like that to the other side, we got to the other side. Did they beat you in the forest? The only time they beat me was when, um, anytime I slowed down, you know, there was always one at the back. So the one in the front, once I slow down, we just give that command to the one at the back that I was not cooperating. Then that one just um, hit me to make me walk faster and run. At a point, did you have any conversation with them in the forest? Did you ask yes. them why they do what they do? Yes. You know, after talking with my dad, um, they, they made sure they, they told him um, to get the money and he said, okay, he was trying, he was working on it. So probably knowing that the money was coming got them to kind of relax a little. And because um, we were just, so we, we stopped in more than, I think like three places where we sat down waiting for them to call back or to call them. I was the one that is always calling back because I was really anxious. You wanted to leave yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So I was the one doing the calling actually. And the most time we stay in places where there is no network. So even if they want to, they will not be able to reach us until I ask them to call. And uh, so when we sat down, and you know, that was when they were telling me that 
they are they don't have cattle they don't have cattle the only thing they do is to kidnap for money all they want was money you know that was when they were telling me that next time next time when you see robbers you stop don't run that what they want is just money i should just have stopped you know and even one of them was even telling me later that he said it in Yoruba that you're my bakadara. Like, you just have to take faith as it comes. You know. And, you know, now that I, I think about it, probably they have, probably they were thinking about my fiancé. You know, because they were telling me that I should just take it that that is how sometimes life happens. Like that. So, so at this time they had human face. Yes. Not all of them. It was one of them that was telling me that that I should just take life as it came. That they also are just trying to make a living because Nigeria is difficult and all that. So they are also trying to make money and all. So. so at just... what point did your dad come? At what point did your dad come into the forest? Yeah, so when it was about four o'clock, because they, they wanted to leave that area, I think there was a time they... Four o'clock the next day? Yes. That's 4 p.m., yes. At the time, they, they, I think they received a call. They were telling me that, oh, so you have your parents have alerted the security forces, the vigilante, and all that. The vigilante, they, they, they know that the vigilante is looking for them. So... Yeah, I better call them and warn them that if they get anybody involved, they will not see me alive. So I called, I called him at that time and you know warned him. You warned your dad. I had to warn him. <laughs> I've seen them kill, so they could. And then you know when it was getting to about that, so they were anxious. I guess that was why they were anxious to leave. They wanted to leave. So when it was that four o'clock. They called him, he was still begging them that it was a Saturday. No one keeps cash in the house. You know, try to, he has tried to transfer money to different people so that they could use the ATM to withdraw money. But, you know, the limit is about 100,000 naira. So how many people do you want to transfer to even raise that kind of money? Nobody keeps money in the house. So I was trying to explain to them, to beg them that, oh, he's retired. He's not working. How is he going to raise money and all that? So... You know, at that time, they became frustrated because we have been waiting since 6 a.m. And you haven't eaten at the store? No, I hadn't. I hadn't. You were not hungry. My mind was to get out. They offered to give me food, actually. They food offered. From where? Okay, one of them went to get food for them. Okay. Yeah, one of them went to get food for them. So, they offered to buy me rice, but I told them I wasn't. So, they know that environment? They know. Because they knew where to go to get food. Mm. Yes, they knew where to go. And they knew where to go to because it was dark. No touch light. And they still knew where they were going. We crossed that river because they knew they had to be on the other side. So, I think they knew where they were going. Mm. Well, environment, I mean, they were familiar with the environment. So, yeah. They got food. So when they pestered me, I told them to get me bread, but I was even scared that probably they could have even poisoned it or something. So I wasn't ready to eat, you know, anything and all. So they, that four o'clock when my when I called my dad, I could sense their frustration because one of them shot at me to get my dad's attention because you know he felt my dad was just taking them for a ride. So. Can you describe that scene? Yeah, you know, he asked my dad. My dad was still begging. And he became so angry that, you mean since 6 a, since morning, you have not done, and then just raised the gun and just shot. You what know, kind of gun are we talking aimed. about here? It's a very long one. Okay. The long gun, you know, something like the hunters will hold. Mm. Yeah, something like that, so, you know. You know, I, I, I had most out of courage when they, when they, when, when they uh, you know, kidnapped me that, and made up my mind that by God's grace, I was going to get out alive, you know. So 
I was trying to be courageous all through the experience. I was, you know, doing everything to cooperate with them, not to get them angry. But when they made that shot, it scared the living daylight out of you. Oh my God. I mean, I've seen the shot to my fiance's head. I've seen how in just a few seconds. You know. So when they shot at me, it was like hmm. So I've seen I've seen the, what the gun could do. So I was really, really scared at that time. You know, I was begging my dad that you know what? Anybody just I was almost like telling him that even if you can go enter the road and just be asking anybody for cash. Just try and raise this guy's money. Because they were desperate to leave at that time. And then they were also um, they were also telling me then that if they don't bring it, they can equally kill me and all get buyers for the body. Get you know, buyers for the body. That was what they said. That there are people who buy the head body parts. Body parts. So they sell body parts. I mean, for the, I don't know why they would say that. But that was what they said, that if he doesn't do that, that they have nothing to lose, that they will still make their money. So at what point did your dad get to the location? That was around 9 p.m. He got to Irua around 9 p.m. And then he, he called them. So three of them left. He came alone? He came, yeah, they told him to come alone, not to come. And even I myself warned him not to, not to try to bring anybody with him, you know. So, they, they, so three of them went to meet him. They left me with one of them. So, he later told me that they asked him to go to like three different locations. You know, he didn't see them. He said he was on the phone talking to them. They told him to tell him to go somewhere, then later they will ask him to go to another place, just... So he, he, he was just moving? Moving around, you know. Then at the end of the day, probably, I guess they were trying to see if he was being followed. So later they told him to pack somewhere and just drop the money there. And then told him to move her head, told him to stay, and a place where he should stay, you know. So I think they picked up the money and all. So the other guy, the one that was with me, got a call and said, we can, we can so move. So three of the guys went to pick the money? Yes. So it was the only one that was left with me. Did you, did you ever think of running away? Of course, I did. I was, you know, when they first picked me, I was, I was even looking out, like, trying to mark the world that, okay, so that if I'm able to escape, I'll be able to run back. You know, I was, I was hoping I would get a chance to run. If I, a lot of times the rope they tied, I would try and remove it so that it would be easy for me to lose it myself. And any time they saw that, I mean, it was getting them angry, oh, you want to escape, you know, it, it, I mean, and then they would tighten it, make it tighter, you know. But later in the, I was praying and hoping I would get a chance, saying, God, please just give me a chance to escape. And later I just said, wait, let me even pray about it and know how God wants to get me out of it. Like I said, I was determined I was getting out alive. And God told me, your life is more important. Just let them have the money. So you decided against escaping? So I decided because, I mean, I was always at the middle, two in the front, two at the back. And they never let down their guard. So, I mean, they had two guns. So one at the front, one at the back. So I knew that if I made a run for it, it would be easy for them to just shoot me. So that was when I just you know, just left it and just... So when they collected the money, at what point did they release you? Yeah, you got a call that the money has been... Um, that the, it, is, it should bring me. So we started trekking. I didn't even know that it was such a long distance from where he was also. So I guess they were just trying to be careful in her. In case uh, there was a police on it, so it was a long distance mm. from where they collected the money because it took me around 15 minutes to get to where my dad was. So he walked me down, and when, so they told him to pull on his, uh, put on his um, headlight. So when we got to a point where I could see it, he asked me to go on. 
So like while you were working, did yeah. you feel they were still training yes, you? Yes, because if I, at the time, the one that was with me, I was asking, are they going to hurt my dad? I, didn't know, I hope they're not going to hurt my dad. You were speaking Yoruba to him? Yes. And he was like, I think that was the one that was, I think, a little bit seen among them. And he was like, ah, oh, no. We are not God. We, are not, we also know that there is God. We can't just be killing like that, you know. It was one I wasn't talking all through, you know. I didn't really see, I didn't even see his face at all. It was always at the back. And he was like, no, don't worry. We're not going to kill you. We're not going to kill you too. You know, we are showing me we're not going to kill you. Don't worry, you're going to get back to your family today. I know. But when we got to the other three, on the way I saw that some of them were sitting down somewhere. I guess they were counting the money. I saw them sitting down, I know. So one of them, he joined them and another one was the one that now took me to go and meet my dad. So when, because he was carrying a gun. So I was like, why did why did he ask the one that was carrying a gun to be the one to lead me? So I was really conscious. So when he said I should go ahead, a lot of times I would still look at the bag there. I hope he has not changed his mind because they already collected the money. So I was really scared. I hope they have not changed their mind. I hope it's not that they asked me to go and then I hear something at the back and they shot and all. So, so I ran. I made a run for it. When immediately I saw his car, I just so it was like running to freedom, you know. So did you hug your dad? Of you course. Into the car? I was just I was like, Daddy, I'm seeing you again. Oh. I'm seeing you again. You know, that was the thing that what I was saying. When I even got home, saw my siblings, my sister, I was like, I see everybody again. In my life. I didn't die. I made it. I saw everyone again. At this time, did you know your fiancé was dead? No. I was actually praying all through the night that 